All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I'm Abhishek Mukhopadhyay. With me is Saira Mustafa. The headlines: India and Denmark signed four agreements following talks between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Danish counterpart. India and China to hold 13 round of military level talks in Moldova this morning. External Affairs Minister S. Jayashankar to embark on a fourth visit to Kyrgyz Republic, Kazakhstan and Armenia beginning today. Uttar Pradesh Police arrest Union Minister's son Ashish Mishra in connection with Lakhimpur Khiri violence case. CBI arrest 11 persons in connection with post-goal violence in West Bengal. India's COVID vaccination coverage crosses 94 crore 62 lakh mark. Indian Railways to start running festival special trains from today. And in IPL cricket, Delhi Capitals to take on Chennai Super Kings in the first qualifier in Dubai this evening. As the nationwide free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is underway, we advise the young listeners to get vaccinated and also help others get vaccinated. We also advise the listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain 2 gaz ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any covid related information and guidance contact national health line numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. And now the news in detail. India and Denmark inked four agreements and decided to expand cooperation following bilateral talks between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Danish counterpart Mette Frederiksen in New Delhi. The agreement was signed in the field of skill development and entrepreneurship, traditional knowledge digital library, establishing a center of excellence towards natural refrigerants for tropical climates with potential applications and on mapping of groundwater resources and aquifers. The two countries also decided to expand ties in the fields of health and agriculture. In a statement after the talks, Prime Minister Modi said, "India and Denmark have continued their cooperation even during the pandemic." He said in the virtual summit a year ago, both the countries had taken the historic decision of green strategic partnership. Green strategic partnership. ये हम दोनों देशों की दुर्गामी सोच और पर्यावरण के प्रति सम्मान का प्रतीक है. ये partnership एक उदाहरण है. कि किस प्रकार सामूहिक प्रयास के द्वारा टेक्नोलॉजी के माध्यम से पर्यावरण को संरक्षित रख सकते हुए ग्रीन ग्रोथ के लिए काम किया जा सकता है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड बोथ द कंट्रीज हैव स्टार्टेड अ न्यू पार्टनरशिप इन द हेल्थ सेक्टर ही सेड देव ऑल्सो डिसाइडेड टू कोऑपरेट ऑन एग्रो टेक टू इंक्रीज एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्टिविटी एंड इम्प्रूव फार्मर्स इनकम द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड इट इज अ न्यू डायमेंशन ऑफ इंडिया डेनमार्क पार्टनरशिप He said during the meeting, both sides not only reviewed the progress made under this partnership, but also reiterated the commitment to increasing cooperation on climate change in the near future. Visiting Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen said, "India and Denmark are two democratic nations, and both believe in an international system based on rules." Ms. Frederiksen said, "Both the countries have agreed to work together in the field of health and agriculture." Our cooperation between India and Denmark is a great example on how green growth and green transition can go hand in hand. We agreed to work even closer together on areas as health and agriculture. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will launch Indian Space Association (ISPA) at 11 a.m. tomorrow via video conferencing. He will also interact with the representatives of the space industry on this landmark occasion. Indian Space Association is the premier industry association of space and satellite companies, which aspires to be the collective voice of the Indian space industry. It will undertake policy advocacy and engage with all stakeholders in the Indian space domain, including the government and its agencies. Echoing the Prime Minister's vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat, ISPA will help in making India self-reliant. Technologically advanced and a leading player in the space arena. India and China will hold 13th rounds of military talks in Moldova along the LAC this morning. 
The Indian Army and People's Liberation Army are holding talks after a gap of two months to discuss in disengagements in remaining areas of eastern Ladakh. Here's a report from our lay correspondent. Ahead of second winter in eastern Ladakh region, India and China are meeting for the 13th time at Moldo on China's side today at 10.30 hours, while last round of the talks between both the parties were held on 31st of July. Sources said this round of talks are focusing on hot spring and Depsang areas in eastern Ladakh. Twelve rounds of talks have yielded desired results in maintaining peace and tranquility on the line of actual control, excepting the bloody face of at Galvan Valley since the military standoff from April 2020. Today, PLA's newly appointed Western Theatre Commander General Wang Haiziang will host Fire and Fury Corps GOC Lieutenant General PZ Minan led Indian delegation in the 13th round of talks. Ramesh Chandra, All India Radio News, Leh. An inter-ministerial subgroup led by the Ministry of Coal has been monitoring the coal stock situation twice a week in the country. In order to manage the coal stock and ensure equitable distribution of coal, the Power Ministry has constituted a Core Management Team or CMT to ensure daily monitoring. It is closely monitoring and managing the coal stocks on a daily basis and ensuring follow-up actions with Coal India Limited or CIL and Railways to improve the coal supply to power plants. Yesterday, CMT reviewed the status. The Ministry said on the 7th of this month, total dispatch of coal by CIL touched 1.501 metric tons, thereby reducing the gap between consumption and actual supply. The centre is assured that the required quantity of gas will be supplied to Bhavana and Pragati stations that supply power to Delhi. Secretary, Ministry of Power, Alok Kumar said that the assurance in this regard has been given by the Secretary, Petroleum and Natural Gas, Tarun Kapoor. Mr. Kumar also said the National Thermal Power Corporation, NTPC, has been directed to increase coal stocks equal to national average for Dandri and Chhajjar stations and ensure full availability. Power Secretary also said that Delhi power distribution companies are not scheduling power from Dandri 1 as they want to exit power purchase agreement after 25 years and they have been advised to schedule power. Narcotics Control Bureau, NCB, has said that all allegations leveled against the agency in connection with the cruise ship raid and recovery of drugs in which Bollywood actor Shah Rukh Khan's son, Aryan Khan, was arrested are baseless, motivated, afterthoughts and prejudicial. NCB Deputy DG Gyaneshwar Singh said the anti-drugs agency works professionally. अभियुक्तों द्वारा किए गए खुलासे और उनके बयान के आधार पर छह और ऑपरेशन कंडक्ट किए गए जो बाद में हुए हैं छह फॉलो अप सीजर उसमें 10 आदमियों को हम लोगों ने गिरफ्तार किया है और विभिन्न प्रकार के ड्रग जैसे एक्सेसिव मेफेड्रॉन हाइड्रोपोनिक वीड चरस वगैरह इनसे बरामद हुए हैं लगातार हो रही गिरफ्तारियां और ड्रग की रिकवरी इस ओर इंगित करती है कि ये एक बहुत बड़ा नेटवर्क है हमारी युवाओं को बुरी तरह प्रभावित कर रहा है केस का अन्वेषण जारी है और आने वाले समय में हम सभी इस पूरे गिरोह का पर्दाफाश कर सकेंगे NCB के खिलाफ लगाए गए सारे आरोप निराधार हैं और प्रीजुडिस्ड हैं। The Uttar Pradesh Police has arrested Union Minister's son Ashish Mishra in connection with the Lakhimpur Khiri violence case. After medical examination, Ashish was produced before a court and sent to judicial custody. More from our Lucknow correspondent. DIG Saharanpur Upendra Agrawal, who is leading the team of investigations, said that Ashish was arrested after day-long interrogation by the police as he was not cooperating during the interrogation and didn't answer few questions. Ashish appeared before crime branch yesterday morning. Police questioned Ashish about the events that led to the violence on last Sunday in which eight people died. Two other accused were arrested by police in the case and now they are in judicial custody. Ashish lawyer Avadesh said that a local court will hear the matter tomorrow on whether he should be sent to police custody. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. The BJP has hit out at the Congress government in Rajasthan in connection with the alleged lynching of a Dalit youth. BJP spokesperson Gaurav Bhatia said that so far no arrest has been made in the case. He alleged that most of the heinous crimes are being committed in Rajasthan and added that neither the women are safe nor the Dalits. The CBI has arrested 11 persons in Nondigram murder case wherein BJP worker Debobroto Maiti was killed allegedly by Trinamool Congress workers during post-poll violence in West Bengal. CBI had filed the case on September 30th following a Calcutta High Court order. 
देबोव्रत माइती अ बीजेपी एक्टिविस्ट फ्रॉम चीलाग्राम इन नोंदीग्राम वॉज किल्ड आफ्टर द रिजल्ट ऑफ द स्टेट असेंबली इलेक्शन केम आउट तृणमूल वॉज एक्यूज ऑफ किलिंग हिम सीबीआई इज प्रोविंग द मैटर न्यूमरस केसेस हैव बीन रजिस्टर्ड इन कनेक्शन विद द पोस्ट पोल वायलेंस इन वेस्ट बंगाल अर्ल इन ऑगस्ट दिस इयर द कैलकाता हाईकोर्ट ऑर्डर्ड अ कोर्ट मॉनिटर सीबीआई प्रोब इन टू इंसिडेंट्स ऑफ पोस्ट पोल वायलेंस द हाईकोर्ट ऑल्सो ऑर्डर टू सेट अप स्पेशल इन्वेस्टिगेशन टीम्स एस आई टी फॉर इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ रेलेटिवली लेस सीरियस क्राइम्स इंडियाज कोविड नाइन्टीन वैक्सीनेशन कवरेज इज क्रॉस नाइन्टी फोर Out of the total vaccination, more than 68 crore vaccine doses have been given as first dose, while over 26 crore 62 lakh doses have been administered as second dose. Union Health Ministry has said that more than 60 lakh doses were administered yesterday. Health Minister Dr. Mansuk Mandavia reviewed progress of COVID-19 vaccination with 19 states. He interacted with principal secretaries and mission directors of the National Health Mission of all these states. He exhorted each state to increase their vaccination target so that the administration of, a, of the last 6 crore doses for reaching the mark of 100 crore is achieved in the next few days. COVID vaccination campaign is progressing in full swing in Chhattisgarh. The number of vaccine doses inoculated against COVID-19 has crossed the 2 crore mark in the state. More details from our Raipur correspondent. According to the Health Department of Chhattisgarh, more than 2 crore vaccines have been administered in the state including the first and second doses. About 1 crore 42 lakh people in the state have been administered the first dose of vaccine while more than 58 lakh people have been inoculated both doses of COVID vaccine so far. Meanwhile, the COVID situation in Chhattisgarh is improving day by day. The average test positivity rate in the state has come down to 0.10%. At present, there is no active case of corona infection in 6 out of 28 districts of the state. Vikal Pashukla, AIR News, Raipur. Keeping the passenger rush in mind during the festive season, Indian Railways will start running special trains from today. Railways plan to operate nearly 1500 special trains between October 10th and November 21st. In general, railways runs nearly 5,000 special trains during the festive season. However, corona pandemic has hit the operations of trains as well as the demand for trains. Every year, there is high demand for passenger trains in Eastern Indian side from Dashera to Chhat Puja time. Northern Railway has announced a number of festival station trains beginning today to clear extra rush of passengers during the festival season. Southern Railways has also decided to run special train services in the coming days for which the advance reservation has already started. Western Railway, South Central Railway and the South Eastern Railway have announced to run a number of special trains. These include Howrah Puri Special and Hatia Durg Special. Talking to AIA News East Central Railway PRO Rajesh Kumar said We are running festival special trains. The trains will originate from New Delhi and they are destined to Mujaffarpur, Darbhanga, Baroni, Sahasa, Jayanagar. These trains will originate from New Delhi or Anand Vihar terminal stations. Additionally, we are also running a special train between Hatia and Gorakhpur and one special train is also being run from Sialdar to Haridwar. I would request all the passengers to get themselves reserved tickets because all these trains are fully reserved and you can travel only when you have a confirmed reservation. At the same time, I would also request all the passengers to follow COVID appropriate behavior. during their journey department related parliamentary standing committees for 2021 2022 has been reconstituted the standing committees have been reconstituted with effect from 13 september rajya sabha member v vijay sai reddy of ysr congress has been appointed as the chairman of the parliamentary standing committee on commerce rajya sabha mp dr vinay p sahasra budde of the bjp has been appointed as the chairman of the committee on education women children youth and sports The Committee on Health and Family Welfare will be headed by Rajya Sabha MP Ram Gopal Yadav of the Samajwadi Party. Rajya Sabha MP and Congress Leader Anand Sharma has been appointed as the Chairman of the Committee on Home Affairs. You are listening to the Morning News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. India and Denmark signed four agreements following talks between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Danish counterpart. India and China to hold 13th round of military level talks in Malta this morning. External Affairs Minister Dr S Jayashankar to embark on a four day visit to Kyrgyz Republic, Kazakhstan and Armenia beginning today. 
उत्तर प्रदेश पुलिस अरेस्ट यूनियन मिनिस्टर्स सन आशीष मिश्रा इन कनेक्शन विद लखीमपुर खीरी वायलेंस केस सीबीआई अरेस्ट 11 पर्सन इन कनेक्शन विद पोस्ट पोल वायलेंस इन वेस्ट बंगाल इंडिया कोविड वैक्सीनेशन कवरेज क्रॉसेज नाइन्टी फोर क्रॉस सिक्सटी लाख मार्क इंडियन रेलवे टू स्टार्ट रनिंग फेस्टिवल स्पेशल ट्रेन फ्रॉम टूडे एंड एन आईपीएल क्रिकेट डेली कैपिटल्स टू टेक ऑन चेन्नई सुपर किंग्स इन फर्स्ट क्वालिफायर इन दुबई दिस इवनिंग फॉर क्विक न्यूज अपडेट्स राउंड द क्लॉक फॉलो अस ऑन आर ट्विटर हैंडल एट ए आई आर न्यूज अलर्ट आजादी के आंदोलन के खजाने में ऐसे ढेरों शब्द जिन्होंने बदल दिए इतिहास तारीख बदलने वाले लफ्जों पर आकाशवाणी समाचार ला रहा है विशेष कार्यक्रम धरोहर हर सोमवार वेलकम बैक यूर लिस्निंग टू द मॉर्निंग न्यूज External affairs minister S Jayashankar will be on a 40th visit to Kyrgyz Republic, Kazakhstan and Armenia beginning today. Dr Jayashankar will reach Kyrgyz Republic today for a two day visit. This will be his first visit to the country as external affairs minister. He will hold a bilateral meeting with the foreign minister of Kyrgyzstan apart from calling on the president of Kyrgyz Republic. Some agreements or MOUs are also expected to be signed during the visit. The external affairs minister will be in Kazakhstan for two days from tomorrow. to attend the 6th ministerial meeting of the conference of interaction and confidence building measures in asia cica in nur sultan kazakhstan is the current chair and initiator of the cica forum dr jay shankar is also expected to hold bilateral talks with deputy prime minister and foreign minister of kazakhstan and call on the kazakh leadership as the nation celebrates the 75th year of independence a series of events has been organized by the government as a part of azadi ka amrit mahotsav let's listen to a special program azadi ka safar highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle azadi ka amrit mahotsav आजादी का सफर विद ए आई आर न्यूज बर्थ ऑफ अ नेशन इंडिया इज ग्लोरियस फ्रीडम स्ट्रगल इज वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट स्ट्रगल द मॉडर्न वर्ल्ड हैज एवर विटनेस्ड ए आई आर न्यूज ब्रिंग्स यू अ ग्लिम्स ऑफ द स्ट्रगल एवरी डे टूडे इज द बर्थ एनिवर्सरी ऑफ फ्रीडम फाइटर बदरुद्दीन तैयब जी ही वॉज बोर्न इन बॉम्बे ऑन द टेंथ ऑफ ऑक्टोबर एटीन Tayyab ji was a founding member of the Indian National Congress. He was selected as a third president of the Congress from 1887 to 1888. Tayyab ji studied in Europe. He returned to India in December 1867 and became the first Indian barrister in the High Court of Bombay. At that time there was neither an Indian lawyer nor a judge. As a judge of the Bombay High Court he was known for his courage and impartiality which became clear in his granting bail to Bal Gangadhar Tilak in a sedition case in 1897 after it had been rejected thrice by others Gandhi ji once admitted that he did not have the skills the best lawyers of the time like Feroz Shah Mehta or Badruddin Tayyab ji were known for powerful oration exhaustive knowledge of statutes and the ability to recite case laws at will in 1902 badruddin tayyab ji became the first indian to hold the post of the chief justice of the bombay high court it is said that tayyab ji had a role in the design of the tricolor historian trevor royal in his book titled the last days of the raj 
says originally the tricolor was to have contained the spinning wheel symbol, charka, used by Mahatma Gandhi. But this was a party symbol which Tayabji thought might strike the wrong note. After much persuasion, Gandhiji agreed to the wheel because Emperor Ashoka was venerated by Hindus and Muslims alike. The flag, which flew on Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru's car that night, had been specially made by Tayabji's wife, Mrs. Suraya. The flag was approved, accepted and adopted in its present form during a meeting of the Constituent Assembly held on 22nd July 1947 and it became the official flag of the Dominion of India on 15th August 1947. Badruddin Tayyabji passed away suddenly of a heart attack on 26th August 1906 while on furlough in London. <laughs> Do you know why freedom fighter Kushal Kumar of Assam was hanged to death by the British during the Quit India movement of 1942? Well, he was charged for his alleged role in the derailment of a train carrying British soldiers in Assam. It was on 10th October 1942. The train derailed at 1.52 in the night about one kilometer away from Sarupathar railway station in Golagat district. According to witnesses, about 1,000 British soldiers were killed in the accident. Immediately after the accident, police and army personnel cordoned off the area and indulged in indiscriminate atrocities and arrests. Numerous freedom fighters were implicated in connection with the accident and jailed. During that time, Kushal Kumar was advised by many to go underground, but he refused. Since Kumar was a prominent leader of the Golaghat District Congress Committee, he too was falsely implicated and arrested along with 43 others. In Jorhat jail, he spent 120 days as an under-trial prisoner and 100 days in solitary confinement as a prisoner. He was awarded the death sentence which was carried out by the British on 15th June 1943. <laughs> The 38-year-old freedom fighter's life was snuffed out in an unjust manner. But he died a glorious death, having sacrificed his life in the prime of his youth for the cause of his country. In 2016, the Assam government decided to preserve the martyr's house at Balijan near Sarupathar. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Mumbai police yesterday pasted a notice outside the residence of IPS officer Parambir Singh asking him to appear before it in connection with an extortion case on October 12th. According to an official, recently Maharashtra Home Minister Dilip Walse Patil had said that there were reports that Singh, a former Mumbai police commissioner, who is now facing at least five criminal cases in the state, had left the country, but there was no confirmed information. The crime branch of the Mumbai police is probing an extortion case registered against Singh in suburban Goregaon and wanted to question him. A police team yesterday went to Mr. Singh's flat in Nilima building in Malabar Hill area and pasted a notice outside as he was not there. Union Minister of Commerce and Industry, Piyush Goel, has called Export Promotion Councils for 450 to 500 billion dollar exports next year. Mr. Goel said this while addressing the mid-term review meeting with heads of various export promotion councils through video conferencing. Expressing satisfaction that India's exports have bounced back, touching $197 billion in the first half of financial year 2021-22, he said with 48% targeted volumes achieved, we are on the right track. He informed that Prime Minister Modi will unveil his most ambitious infrastructure development vision, Gati Shakti program on Ashtami, the day of Goddess Durga representing Shakti, that is on 13th of October. 
In IPL cricket, Delhi Capitals will take on Chennai Super Kings in the first qualifier in Dubai today. The match will start at 7:30 p.m. Delhi Capitals finished the league phase on top of the points table. The Rishabh Pant led side bagged 20 points in 14 games. They were followed by Chennai Super Kings in second with 18 points. Royal Challengers Bangalore are third with 18 points because of a lower net run rate as compared to CSK. RCB are followed by Kolkata Knight Riders in fourth position for the final playoff spot. Royal Challengers Bangalore will face Kolkata Knight Riders in the eliminator tomorrow. Now let us take a look at the weather update for today. The national capital Delhi will have mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature is 23 degrees Celsius and maximum is likely to be 36 degrees Celsius. Mumbai may, may experience rain or thunder showers, uh, which would occur towards evening. The minimum temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, while the maximum is expected to be around 34 degrees. Kolkata will have partly cloudy sky. The city observed a minimum temperature of 27 degrees Celsius and a maximum of around 34 degrees. Chennai is expected to have generally cloudy sky with light rain. The temperature will vary between 26 and 35 degrees Celsius. Bangalore will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Temperature will hover between 21 and 27 degrees Celsius. Hyderabad may experience generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature is 24 degrees Celsius and a maximum will be around 32 degrees. Srinagar will witness partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Temperature will hover between 10 and 24 degrees Celsius. Jammu will have mainly clear sky, becoming partly cloudy towards evening or night. The minimum temperature is 22 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 32 degrees. Vishakhapatnam will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The city observed a minimum temperature of 26 degrees Celsius and a maximum of around 33 degrees. Tiruvannathapuram will have generally cloudy sky with few spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature is 24 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 31 degrees. In Puducherry, will witness generally cloudy sky with with moderate rain. The temperature will vary between 25 and 33 degrees Celsius. Guwahati will have partly cloudy sky with possibility of development of thunder and lightning. The minimum temperature is around 24 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 35 degrees. Imphal will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The city observed a minimum temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and a maximum of around 30 degrees. Shillong will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Temperature will hover between 16 and 25 degrees Celsius. Aizawl will have generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature was 18 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 28 degrees. And now an overview of today's newspapers. India-China military talks today focus on pullback at hot springs, informs the Tribune. Delhi stares at a power crisis, sends out SOS, states Hindustan Times. Bring law to honor Ram Krishna, says Allahabad High Court judge, reports the Times of India. Global Pact on minimum corporate tax of 15%, reports the Hindu. adding it will end race to bottom among countries wooing mnc's india denmark signed four accords pm modi invites danish investment in india says the statesman modi danish pm agreed to further green strategic partnership writes hindustan times cwc meet on october 16 to discuss chief's election political situation notes the pioneer and finally real life drama as real life artists go to polls well this is line reports that election to the telugu movie artists association gives a soap opera like feel with top tollywood actor chiranjeevi and veteran actor producer mohan babu being pitched against each other in opposing camps and now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again india and denmark signed four agreements following talks between prime minister narendra modi and his danish counterpart India and China to hold 13th round of military level talks in Moldova this morning. External Affairs Minister is Jay Shankar to embark on a four day visit to Kyrgyz Republic, Kazakhstan and Armenia beginning today. Uttar Pradesh police arrest Union Minister's son Ashish Mishra in connection with the Lakhimpur Kheri violence case. CBI arrest 11 persons in connection with post poll violence in West Bengal. India's COVID vaccination coverage crosses 94 crore 62 lakh mark. Indian Railways to start running festival special trains from today and in IPL cricket Delhi Capitals to take on Chennai Super Kings in the first qualifier in Dubai this evening and with that we end the morning news